The most popular way for training neural networks is via stochastic gradient descent. This optimization method updates the weights iteratively based on the gradient of the error that we want to minimize. Now in this video we are going to explicitly write out how to compute the gradients in neural networks. And it, it turns out that even though neural networks can be incredibly complex, the computations of gradients themselves is actually quite tractable uh, because it can be sequentially obtained via a consistent application of the chain rule of differentiation. Now just as the activations in a forward pass can be computed by evaluating the activations layer by layer, also the gradients in each layer can be sequentially computed by backpropagating the errors from the last layer all the way down to the first layer. Now since the multidimensional chain rule plays such a central role in this uh, optimization framework, let's take a look what it actually says, this multidimensional chain rule. We use this rule when we have to deal with a multidimensional function, so that it's a function of multiple input parameters, and each of these inputs, let's denote them with a g index with some uh, subscript d, each of these inputs is in turn again a function of another input. So let's put it like this, so we have all these, let's call them coordinates, each coordinate depends on some parameter x, and uh, my function f is again a function of these uh, coordinates, right? Now, if I want to compute the derivative of such a function with respect to x, so the, let's say is the lowest um, parameter in the hierarchy, then we have to apply the chain rule as, as we've used to, but now we work in this multidimensional setting. So I have to take into account the influence of a change of parameter x on all these input parameters. So that's roughly what it says. So I'm taking the derivative of f with respect to x, which can be thought of as um, the influence of a small change in x on the value of f. Then the change that this a small delta x change induces is going to be a sum of the, of, of, the, of the effect of changing x that it has on the d coordinate times, and this is the chain rule essentially of f with respect to that particular coordinate. Right, so all these changes on these coordinates uh, add up via the chain rule to a total change on my final uh, function f. Okay, so that explains the multidimensional chain rule. Now, now let's try to translate this uh, to the context of our neural networks. Uh, first start off by recalling that my neural network is actually a nested function. It's, it's a function after function after function, um, roughly looking like this. So I have a neural network as a function of an input x, and it's obtained by, let's start it on the right, so by first applying this linear transformation in the first layer uh, on x, so that gives me the activations of the first layer, then we apply some nonlinearity to it, then again some uh, linear transformation of the second layer, then again some activation function on it, and so on. So this means if you want to, if we were to compute the derivative of this neural network with respect to x, we have to apply a chain rule over here, right? So to propagate the errors, like the small changes that my x have on a to h to a to h, all the way to the effect of my final, the effect that it has of the small change on my final uh, output. Okay, now also recall that uh, my neural networks, like these functions, are uh, multidimensional functions, right? It's, it's mappings from uh, an input vector to an output vector. So this f could, for example, be um, one single activation, let's say the activation of at layer L, and this activation was given via linear combination of all the, the, the activations of the previous layer, right? So if L minus one, which again is a function of X, we have uh, the activation number two at layer L minus one, which is a function of X. And so we have all these activations. So we see that the, uh, the activation unit one at layer L is going to be a function of all these previous uh, activations, which are in turn a function of the input X. Okay, so each activation is a function of previous activations. Okay, so that's denoted over here. So my f could be uh, my first activation and it's going to be a function of all these uh, activations uh, at uh, the previous layer. Okay, and that then tells me that if we want to compute derivatives 
uh, these multidimensional derivatives and chain rules, we have to rely on this particular formula, which uh, we will get back to at the point where we actually start using it. But for now, uh, remember, this is the multidimensional chain rule. You should really remember this formula. Then uh, the setting is as follows. We have designed our neural network, uh, which is designed to, to transform an input to a particular output. Uh, so we make some decisions on, on the output, for example. And now my output um, is used to compute an error, right? So this output really defines the error. And then I'm going to compute the, the derivative of this error with respect to this model parameters W. So I apply some gradient descent method, for example, to update my weights based on the error that I computed, right? So I need to evaluate uh, the derivatives of my error with respect to these weights. So, and then I just said that I'm going to need to rely on the multidimensional chain rule, right? Because if I want to uh, measure the influence that this W has on the error, it has to propagate through all these layers up to my error. So I'm going to need this uh, chain rule. Now let's think about the flow of information. So what we're actually doing. So we have this input and this input information propagates forward, right? So it's used to compute the, the activations at the next layer. And then we again compute it at the next layer. So essentially the information at layer L is obtained by looking at information that was available at the previous layer. And we use this very simpler rule that we just work with these uh, linear transformations followed by applying this activation uh, function to each activation. And that would give me the hidden uh, units at that particular layer. Okay, so this is called forward propagation, really the propagation of information from the input all the way to the output. Uh, and in this process, we are essentially computing all the possible activations uh, at, uh, at the hidden units. Then what we're going to focus on today is going to be back propagation. So the back propagation of errors. So again, once I've done this forward uh, pass, then I know what my outputs are. I know what my error is. And that allows me to essentially compute a gradient in the end. And I'm going to start off with by computing the errors or the derivative at this layer. And I'm going to propagate these gradients all the way back, um, well, to, to the first layer using this chain rule of differentiation. So that's the task of back propagation. The goal is to compute all derivatives. Because recall that it is our objective, right, to uh, in the end have access to all these derivatives because those can be used to, to update my weights via stochastic gradient descent, for example. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to compute all derivatives uh, of my error function with respect to my model parameters and uh, I'm going to evaluate this error based on some data point xn. Now it is important to realize that if we consider the, the derivative with respect to let's say this particular uh, model parameter wji uh, then it's important to realize that a small change of this parameter leads to a change in the results only via this activation over here. So it only induces a change through this particular activation. So this means that I can compute this uh, derivative with respect to w WJI by the chain rule, right? Uh, because it only depends, it only, this error only passes through this A, uh, this jade uh, node. So I have to compute the, the derivative of my error with respect to this jade node. Let's mark that in red. And then of course the chain rule, I also need to compute the derivative DAJ DWJI. Now the computation of uh, dA to dWji, that's simple enough, right? Because we have this, uh, this simple relation over here. It's just a linear combination of my uh, previous uh, activations. Then the tricky part lies into the computation of this uh, derivative uh, of my error with respect to the jade uh, activation. Because this jade activation, uh, this one, um, is used by all other nodes downstream uh, connected to it, right? So changing this uh, particular activation has an influence on all these other activations and, and therefore it has a more intricate um, contribution to the final error. Um, so for now we're going to keep it a bit simple and we're going to introduce a new symbol which we call the node error associated with the jade node. So we're going to just define it for now to be this error, which we're going to take a look at uh, later on. So delta is the derivative of my error 
with respect to this uh, J node, right? And we're going to denote it with delta J. So delta J is this node error, and it's an error that we place at the J node. So then it means that my uh, derivative with respect to W uh, W J I is given by this node error times delta A J delta W J I. So again, looking at these terms, this is what we are set out to compute. So we want to update our uh, model parameters W J I. For that, I'm going to need the error uh, with respect to my jade activation. So uh, I'm going to, for now, let's call this thing a delta J, the node error. And then of course we need the derivative of the node AJ with respect to uh, W J I. Okay, so let's focus on that one first. Um, so this is what we just did. So we said we want to compute this error and it's going to be given by delta J delta a j delta w j i and now we want to compute this particular term so um, before i proceed i just want to mention that i'm not going to write out all these uh, layer indices uh, all the time and i'm going to use the index notation to refer to the layer so whenever i'm talking about um, well my final layer in this particular chain that i'm considering i'm going to use the index k so all nodes uh, in this uh, layer will be indexed with, with the index k. And then if I talk about the layer before this, I'm going to use indices j and the layer before this. So let's say layer minus two is going to be re referred to with index i. So whenever I write uh, zi, this means this is a hidden unit corresponding to a layer L minus two. So this we have this ordering I, J, K going from layer minus two to minus one to my current layer. Okay, so with that said, uh, this hidden unit is based on the activation J, which is obtained via linear combinations. So I sum over I, the index in the previous uh, layer, W, J, I, the hidden units of that layer. Okay, so of this thing, I now need to compute the derivative with respect to WJI, and it immediately follows that, um, well, it's going to be ZI, right? So the derivative delta AJ to delta WJI is given by ZI. Okay, that's uh, simple enough. Okay, so then this is what we currently have. That's uh, my error, uh, my derivative with respect to WJI of my error function is given by delta j, so the node error j times set i. Okay, and now we're going to focus on this particular term, which we call uh, the node error. So now we are going to actually compute this derivative. And to do this, recall that my final error is going to be determined by, by these nodes. And these nodes are again a function of uh, the, the aj of the node of which I'm now currently computing this derivative. So if I make this a bit more explicit, I'm going to say that my error function, it depends on these nodes ak, so the nodes in, uh, in this layer, and these nodes in turn depend on this jade uh, activation, right? So each node contributes to the error and each of these nodes in, in turn are a function of the aj that I'm currently considering. So now I can compute uh, the multi-dimensional chain rule. So in order to compute this, I'm going to use the multi-dimensional chain rule, which tells me that this derivative is given by uh, sum over k. So all the parameters that depend on uh, my jade um, activation. So all these, so I'm sum over all these parameters a k, the derivative delta e with respect to this parameter delta e delta a k, and uh, times the derivative of this particular parameter to a j. So this is just applying the multi-dimensional chain rule. And of course. Uh, these derivatives are maybe also hard to compute, right? So maybe we have downstream, we have more intricate re relations, uh, which I'm not going to focus on at the moment. So again, for now, I'm just going to say, I'm going to call this thing delta k. So the node errors at these um, um, 
nodes AK, at these activations AK. Okay, so to keep it a bit simple, I'm going to denote this as the sum over K, my node errors K times delta A K delta A J. So the derivative of my K node to the J activation. So this tells me if I want to uh, compute the error at uh, node J, then I'm going to need the errors at the nodes at my uh, higher layer uh, in the network, right? So, so we're going to have this flow of, of information that uh, the error at my higher nodes are going to contribute to the error of my lower nodes. So this is essentially the idea behind backpropagation. But just for clarity, I'm going to write out that indeed each hidden unit, let's say the ZJ is obtained by applying this activation, uh, this activation H to AJ, right? And, and the same for my uh, Y case, it's obtained from my gate activation um, in, in that particular layer. Okay, so we are going to leave these node errors uh, for now uh, for what they are. And now we're going to focus on this derivative. Okay, so this is, now this is what we had so far. We were computing the derivative of my error with respect to WJI. And this consisted of uh, the node error, the J node error times ZI. And we were currently focusing on computing this particular term. And we saw that this particular term was obtained via a combination of my, let's say, upstream nodes, node errors, uh, delta K. But in order to make this assignment, we need to compute the derivative delta AK to delta AJ. So let's now just compute this thing. And recall that my AK, so my K activation, is obtained as a linear combination from uh, the nodes um, at the lower layers, right? So the hidden units. Uh, okay, so let's just insert that. So these ZJs that are directly obtained. So let me just write it out. So each ZJ was indeed obtained by applying this activation unit, right? So let's just uh, fi fill this in. We're going to compute the derivative delta, delta AJ of this sum over J, WKJ, and then apply this activation function to my J activation. And this derivative directly follows from the chain rule and it's given by WKJ times derivative of this activation function with respect to its input, evaluated at AJ. Okay, so that's simple enough. We compute the derivative of AK to AJ and that's given as follows. So my weight WKJ times the derivative of my activation function. And this is something that you can uh, predetermine before you start making all these compute computation. Uh, I'm going to give some simple examples of what the derivative of activation functions look like. But now I have a, a way of computing these uh, delta j, so the node errors, the j node errors, simply by taking uh, computing derivative of my uh, activation function at node j times the sum over k of the node errors at uh, the higher layers. So really, I'm just filling filling in this formula, right? So we just computed delta a k delta a j, uh, and that gives me this expression in the end. So that's, this clearly shows if I know the node errors at these higher layers, so delta k, delta 1, then I can obtain my node error at the node j simply via this update rule. So we have a flow of information, the flow of errors from the higher layers to the lower layers by multiplying each error with the corresponding uh, weight. So we have these higher node errors, which are multiplied by this weight WKI. And that together with the derivative of my activation function uh, gives me the error at node J. Okay, so this is something that we can actually compute, right? Because all these activations, we can compute them in the forward pass. Uh, these WKJs, we know their values, and we also know how to take the derivative of my activation function. It's just filling this in, and that gives me uh, the delta J. The only uh, starting point is actually computing the derivative at my very last uh, layers.
And that's what I'm going to show uh, in the next uh, slides how to do this. It's, it's, it's actually quite simple. So once you know the, the, the node errors at the last layers, we can propagate these errors all the way down via this particular rule. Okay, so then uh, this, this update scheme, so the scheme for computing this derivative has a very clear structure to it, right? So we have this forward pass, and in this forward pass, we propagate the information from the input all the way to, to the last layer using just the definition of our network. So each node at AJ is obtained from the activation from the, from the lower layers by this linear transformation where each uh, node at the previous layer was activated by the activation function, right? So this sum over i. So this really is how we define the network to be. The activations at this layer are obtained via linear combinations of my uh, hidden units at the previous layer. Okay, and once I've performed this forward pass, I also know the node values at my output, right? And these node values then determine uh, the error. This also means that now I can start computing the derivatives uh, of my nodes, of my error with respect to these nodes. Uh, specifically, you would start with computing the derivative, uh, the node error delta k. So at the outputs, I made these errors, and these errors were defined to be the derivative of my error function with respect to this particular node. And because my outputs directly determine the error, uh, we can simply compute this, uh, which in the least squares error, uh, for example, boils down to yk minus tk. Right, suppose my error was given by uh, the sum of squared errors, or the squared error, tk squared, then um, the derivative of this thing would give me this. So I have a way of computing the errors at my output nodes. Okay, and then we also just derived a way for computing the derivative at the lower layer nodes via this update rule. So, okay, so now we can propagate these errors down to the lower layers uh, via this update rule. So the derivative of my activation at node j, and then the weighted sum of my, all my uh, higher layered errors weighted with uh, my model parameters. Now I put this remark uh, down here because we have to, of course, be careful with, with skip connections. Um, so we could uh, have models that directly propagate information from here to here. Then of course we have to check for the links um, that, that, that contribute to, to this activation. So that means I'm summing essentially over all nodes upstream that are connected to the node that I'm currently updating. It's just something uh, to take into account. Okay, so that's essentially uh, the back propagation phase. So in the back propagation phase, I propagate errors from the end all the way down uh, to the lower layers. And then if I'm done with this back propagation, I also know what the derivative with respect to the model parameters wji are, and that's simply given, that's one of the first things we derived, it's simply given by this node error z, uh, delta j times uh, zi. And these derivatives can then in turn be used in your whatever optimization scheme that you use, but almost any optimization scheme uh, relies on this derivative. And now let's just take a look at uh, the gradient descent algorithm, what it does. It does, we update the, the node parameter uh, wji, so that my next iterate is going to be the parameter that I already had, and then I walk in the negative gradient direction, which was given by delta j times zi. Okay, so really this summarizes everything. So in the forward pass, I make sure that all my activations uh, are computed, and then I can start the backward pass, and that is start off by first computing the error at my output nodes, and then I uh, back propagate these errors to obtain also my node errors at the lower layers. Now, when I'm done with that, I not only have all the activations, I also have the node errors, and then I can start computing the derivatives simply by taking the product of my node errors with um, the actual hidden activations. And this in turn can be used to update my weights in an iterative uh, update scheme. Okay, now I'm going to end this video with some examples. Um, so depending on your error function, maybe your errors may look slightly different. 
uh, but we already saw actually for a particular class of activations and uh, targets that we optimize, we always end up with this very simple form of the node error at the outputs. For example, if we consider logistic regression, then we typically minimize this least squares error function and the derivative of this error function with respect to y is simply given by this difference. So this is the error that my target makes with respect um, uh, to the target. So the error that my prediction made makes with respect to the target. And a similar thing happens if we consider classification and uh, we use as error function the cross entropy loss. We computed this in the previous videos, we computed the derivative of the logistic sigmoid, which is the two class version of this thing. And then we saw that we end up with a very similar error. All right, so that's simple enough. And these are then the errors that we use to start off our back propagation. Now a final note on uh, which kind of activation functions you could use and what this would look like. Um, this is an example. Let's consider this two layer neural network. So a two layer neural network, which maps an input to some uh, k-dimensional output vector by passing it through one hidden unit uh, layer uh, directly to the output. And let's consider uh, the regression problem. So I'm not going to apply an output activation uh, to my outputs. Um, but as for the hidden units, they will be computed by the 10H, uh, the hyperbolic tangent. So my activation uh, function will be the 10H. Now this ten tangent hyperbolic is given as follows and it has a very nice derivative. So this is what I'm dealing with. So this is my activation function. And it has the following derivative. So this derivative, uh, we need this when we uh, apply our back propagation, right? And we talk about regression. So we have this uh, quadratic error function. And we just saw that if we compute the derivative of this error function with respect to node uh, yk, then it's just simply given by the, the, the difference uh, between my prediction and the target. So I have my node errors at the output node. So now I can start back propagation. And recall that the back propagation, uh, so the back propagation rule was given uh, by, well, the fact that I need the node errors at the, the last layer. So that's what I have. I also have the current weights, but they also need to compute the derivative of my activation function. So let's just fill this in. So the derivative of the tangent h is this thing, one minus um, the hidden unit squared. So one minus the hidden unit squared and then times uh, the rest of it. So this is really my update rule, which I'm going to use to propagate the delta case down uh, to the lower layers. So step one is this forward propagation. Then step two, uh, compute these node errors and propagate them backward uh, via this back propagation to obtain the node errors at the lower uh, nodes. And since we're now considering a two layer neural network, I only need to compute uh, these uh, nodes at, at this layer, right? Because um, I do, I do not have any weights at this point, so I do not need any node errors at this point. Right, so once I've computed all these delta j's, I'm essentially done with my back propagation. And then I can simply compute uh, the derivatives of my error functions with respect to my model parameters uh, via this update rule, which was given by uh, the node error times the node of this uh, previous layer. And that's explicitly given as follows. Okay, so that wraps it up for error back propagation. So this entire scheme uh, summarizes how to compute uh, your gradients in the end. Um, I would recommend just take your time, go over this example uh, after the video. Uh, but whenever you have to implement this or whenever you need to know how to compute the gradients, just follow this scheme. We have a forward pass moving all information forward that allows me to compute all the activations uh, in my neural networks. Then I need to compute the error that I make at the output and I can propagate it backwards uh, via this uh, simple update rule. And that in the end gives me an expression for the derivatives, which in turn can be used uh, to, to update my weights, for example, via stochastic gradient descent.